I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 700 videos, podcasts, and articles on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, a nurse practitioner, we're the authors of a three-category Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook. The New York Times bestseller, The Ebola Survival Handbook, and even the designers of the new board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, recently named as a Prepared Family Blog's Teaching Preparedness Resource of the Week. Before I start, I want to just tell you that I'm in the Great Smoky Mountains with my lovely wife, and we love this area, and it is a terrific place for people to enjoy the fall. Also, before I start, I want to thank the Canadian Prepper who interviewed us recently on his awesome YouTube channel. If you haven't been there yet, check it out. There's a great deal of awesome information in there for people who want to succeed, even if everything else fails. That's Canadian Prepper. Now, there are many ways to skin a cat, but how many ways are there to close a cat's skin? Well, pretty much the same number of ways that you can close a human skin. Sutures, staples, tape butterfly closures, like stereo strips, those are common methods. But there's another one, topical skin adhesive glues. Topical glues have been around since the 1940s, but it took more than three decades for them to be approved for human use. Since that time, they've become the favorite method of closure for some surgical procedures. Let's discuss the properties and uses of skin adhesives, especially as they apply to survival scenarios. We'll avoid a discussion of cosmetic results, though, as they would be less important in austere settings. Now, topical skin adhesives, or glues, are liquids made from a mixture of cyanoacetate and formaldehyde, called cyanoacrylate. Used medically, these glues become solid upon contact with skin, thus holding wound edges together. Now, the original cyanoacrylate, methyl cyanoacrylate, became what is now known as superglue. Medical versions, octal and butyl cyanoacrylate, were then developed some time later. Topical skin adhesives are useful in a number of specific circumstances and have some benefits not seen with other methods of wound closure. They're quick to apply, they're relatively painless, they don't leave the hatch marks seen with sutures and staples, they don't require removal, skin glues slough off by themselves spontaneously after five to 10 days, they don't require lidocaine anesthetic injections, which makes them less problematic to use in children or those people who are afraid of needles, they create an environment which speeds healing, and they decrease the risk of wound infections with certain bacteria, common gram positives like staph. Topical skin adhesives are best used for simple cuts such as some traumatic lacerations. Use them for short to medium length lacerations, no more than a few inches. Wounds that are completely dry, in other words, no longer bleeding. Areas where there's no skin tension, in other words, not difficult to put together manually, or in wound areas that are over joints, hair-free areas, you might want to have a razor, areas not inside the mouth or other moist cavities, and areas, as I mentioned, that are away from joints. It should be noted, therefore, that there are circumstances where medical glues are not useful. Now, topical adhesives are not helpful or maybe dangerous if they're used inside the mouth or other internal cavity, in other high moisture areas such as the groin or the armpit, around the eyes, unless used with extreme caution, they have been used around the eyes, but very carefully, on joints, unless those joints are immobilized with splints, or very long lacerations. Uh, avulsions are another one that you shouldn't use glues on. Those are areas where skin flaps have been torn off due to trauma or very jagged lacerations and certainly not infected wounds or wounds with dead tissue like gangrene. Of course, in those people that are known to be allergic to cyanoacrylates, you shouldn't be using them. In part two of our series on skin glues, we'll compare skin glues to traditional sutures as a method of wound closure, how to exactly apply glue to a wound, and we'll talk about how commercial super glue compares to the much more expensive medical glues. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, fill those holes in your medical storage by checking out Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits and supplies at her store, 
at store.doomandbloom.net.